Hey everyone, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever you're listening to this really. Um, I just wanted to share some thoughts during this uh, kind of crazy time um, about being content in, uh, in Jesus and in God and all that good stuff. I know it's really hard uh, at a time like this to feel contentment. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video was I was seeing a lot of people posting about um, praying for God to protect them from the disease or praying for um, faith that nothing bad's going to happen. Uh, and I kind of wanted to address that a little bit because um, I feel like the reality is, is that people are going to get sick and um, life is going to be really hard. And God never really promised us um, that we wouldn't have to face trials or hardships. So I wanted to do something that was about being content, not because I feel like God's going to make me invincible, uh, but being content just um, with the world as it is and being able to uh, thank God that I still get to be a part of it and just really enjoy his amazing creation, even when things are tough and crazy. Um, so to do that, I want to start in kind of the theme scripture that I'm going to be using for this series of videos on being content with God, and that's in James chapter 1, verses 2 for 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work in you, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. I think right now it's really easy to see that... Um, we need perseverance, right? Uh, for me, uh, this is a crazy time. I love being around people. Um, I love getting out and uh, just doing things. I'm not really a person who enjoys staying home a lot. Uh, and I'm also, shockingly, not a person who enjoys being sick. So the concept of uh, maybe getting pretty sick in the near future here kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, and I know that lately I've kind of felt like this general sense, like the world's on fire. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else feels like that, but it just feels like um, everything's burning and there's nothing I can really do about it. Uh, so I want to share something with all of you. This will kind of be like part one of, I don't know, five or six. I haven't really worked it out yet. Um, part series on being content with God and with what we have. Um, and I want to move right to the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1. And this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy read, um, but just stick with it. It says, um, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water. Under the vault from the water above, or separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bears fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds, and it was so. And the land produced vegetation, vegetation plant-bearing seeds, according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And then God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the great light to govern the day, and the lesser night light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems, and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. 
God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they, they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Uh, I want to share the scripture for a few reasons, um, but mostly uh, I want to share it because what I'm getting encouragement from right now is actually thinking about all the things um, that I love that I don't have. Um, and that may seem like a weird thing to gain encouragement from. Um, but as the scripture showed us, God's creation is so good. Um, and I think that's something at times like this that feels not obvious. But I think of all the amazing things that I love about creation, uh, whether it's you know, getting to watch hockey, which sounds stupid, but uh, provides so much joy. Or um, going out to the park and just seeing it filled with people. Um, or for me, the big one is just being able to hang out with other people. Um, I realize that these are just gifts from God. Uh, they're amazing gifts from God that we get to partake in generally on a daily basis in our lives. Uh, and it's times like this that we really feel the absence of them. And for me, it's given me kind of an extra appreciation of how good God's creation is, that when part of it gets taken away, it really hurts. Um, so I'm actually gaining a lot of encouragement from that, seeing how um, this is an opportunity to really realize uh, how good God has been to me in my life and how blessed I am. Uh, the other reason I wanted to read that was to show the nature of God. Um, I'm not sure if you pick up on kind of the structure of the six-day creation there, um, or seven-day creation, but I only read six days. Um, the first day he creates um, light and darkness. The second day he creates uh, kind of like the sky and the ocean. And then the third day he creates uh, dry land separating the ocean apart from itself. Um, and that's pretty cool because then on the fourth day, he creates sun and stars and moon, uh, which kind of go in the light and darkness that he was talking about uh, on day one. And on the fifth day, he creates birds and fish, which uh, go in the areas that he ordered in day two. And on the sixth day, he creates all the things on land, animals, us, uh, which goes into the thing he ordered on day three. Um, so we see a God who sees chaos, um, who sees kind of, a harsh uninhabitable place and his desire what he views as good is creating order out of it so day one uh, it was good that he saw something and created order out of it and then on day two it was good for him to create something to inhabit that order uh, so I know right now things can feel tough things can feel scary uh, if you're me you feel like the world's on fire uh, but it's comforting to me to know that we have a God who loves order, we have a God who loves people enjoying his good creation, um, and we're going to get back to that eventually, uh, whether uh, whether you get sick, whether um, you have financial hardships. I know for me personally, I, uh, I'm out of work over this time period, so there's some stress there. Whatever it is, um, God's longing to just pull the seas away from dry land and create a home for us, uh, and we're all going to get through this. And um, I think it can be an awesome time for us to just draw closer to God, uh, really give thanks to God for all the amazing things he's given us, and use this time of absence from the things that we love to appreciate the fact that uh, we have them and God has given them to us, and that all good things come from him. All right, so if I can give you a challenge after this, um, just think about some of the things that you're 
missing right now? Some of the things that you wish you could have or wish you could do, uh, things that are part of your normal everyday life that you kind of neglected thanking God for on a daily basis. And just spend some time in prayer today thanking God that um, that was a part of your life and will be part of your life again. Amen? All right, everyone, have a great day. Uh, we'll resume, I guess, part two, hopefully tomorrow, and I'll see you all then. Thanks.